Welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles showroom in West Hollywood. And I'm here with Douglas with his movie, Nemkamok. Let's take a look at a clip. Mi sargento. ¿Es cierto lo que se cuenta en España de las indias? <risa> Yo no aguanto más. Oh, Dios. Dios, ¿qué has hecho? Vamos, vamos, vamos. Tenemos que irnos de aquí. Tenemos que irnos ahora. Te van a matar por esto. Podría haberla traído conmigo. Douglas, congratulations on your film. Um, quite a journey you took us on, literally. Uh, for those that haven't seen, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. Uh, sure, so Nemkamak is the story of an indigenous woman, Isla Dora, in the early 1800s in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. um, who escapes from uh, uh, the San Gabriel mission um, nearby in Los Angeles and has to get back to a, a village where she can be, be safe. Where did the inspiration come from in, in, in creating this movie? Uh, so the inspiration was, um, you know, for me, I, I, I was working with a team of AFI um, fellows and we were tasked with, uh, you know, producing our, our thesis film. Um, and originally one of the inspirations was simply that we, we, we had to shoot a movie in the, in the 30 mile zone in, around Los Angeles. Wow. And, um, you know, lots of people go and they'll shoot something that takes place somewhere else in, in Afghanistan or in, um, I've seen Russia, I've seen, you know, lots of um, different places that they'll kind of cheat the city of Los Angeles for. And for me, I thought, why not make, you know, a film about Los Angeles, you know? Well, and originally it was kind of in the, in the, in the mold of, um, we're gonna make something local and hopefully it'll be easier. Um, but then I started to, I, I recalled the story that I, uh, the stories that I had heard of, about the indigenous people of Los Angeles. And then I became very passionate um, about telling a story about the indigenous people of Los Angeles because, you know, they're a group that in this city of maybe, you know, 11 million plus people, not a lot of people know about. Um, sure. And despite a lot of the, the, the names still being around, like street, street names like Cahuenga, Coenga was a, a village in, near North Hollywood, um, and then Topanga Canyon and Tohunga and um, um, uh, Azusa. Um, a lot of a lot of place names still exist, but people don't really know the history about it. So I became very passionate um, to do to do the thesis in some way about um, indigenous the indigenous people of Los Angeles. That took us down a very very um, long process of researching. I started researching even more and more than I than I knew um, about <clears throat> about the people of Los Angeles, um, and in that process of researching, I came across a number of stories that I found extremely powerful um, that I felt that we needed to make a movie about. So I learned about, um, in particular, some stories of women in the San Gabriel Mission, um, and I don't want to ruin the movie, but certain you know acts that they had committed in in the San Gabriel mission um, in addition I had read about you know uh, uh, some friars up up north that had helped uh, uh, indigenous people escape from some of the missions um, and so that kind of developed into this story about this indigenous woman escaping from San Gabriel mission uh, with the help of a, a a friar a Franciscan friar who kind of goes against his his order and, and helps her escape um, so, so yeah, that was the, the really impetus. It was, it was a very long process, um, especially at AFI. We have a very, very, very intensive process of um, development mm -hmm. um, where we have to pitch the movie to absolutely everyone around us. And it goes through just series and series of rewrites and, and development to, to hone in the story and to, to, to make it a very clear, concise short film. Um, so that was incredibly helpful. Um, in the development process and uh, and in 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 making the story very concise and powerful and moving. Well, it certainly was powerful and moving, and it, it is so great that you focused in on Los Angeles and particularly that period. Uh, we've had so many great 
thesis films from AFI. Like, we really love you guys and what you guys create. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, one thing that I'm so fascinated at indie level, at a thesis level, how on earth do you create a film that's set in the 1800s? Like, what you really have to capture that atmosphere to make sure everything is believable, the set's believable. How, how was that journey for you, kind of creating that feel? Um, well, that, yeah, it, was, it was very intense. And um, we had challenges even on top of just doing the period aspect because we were also telling the story about a people um, that are very much still around. Um, you know, the, the, the descendants of the people that we made the movie about, they're all still around. And they still um, you know, work here in Los Angeles, live here in Los Angeles um, and elsewhere. And, and uh, you know, they've been, there are people that's been very kind of disenfranchised throughout history. So part of the aspect was, yes, doing all the research and, and making sure that the, the period aspect of the film was, was uh, being represented properly, that, you know, certain articles of clothing were the, were the right material, that we didn't see, you know, seams in the clothing, we didn't see, you know, uh, cars in the background, little kind of silly things like that, but then also um, being as respectful to po as possible to, to representing a culture that, um, you know, we really wanted to do our best to, to, to represent. So, and, and there is, um, there is a lot of lost knowledge. Um, you know, I think the, the, the best consultations that I had in the project were, were people who I was able to talk to and, and say, you know, what did people wear? What did people do? How did people, you know, what kind of activities did they participate in? Um, and those kind of things even have to go into to when you're directing background actors um, and casting background actors. And, you know, some of the best consultations that I got was, you know, hey, this is what we believe happened. This is what, um, you know, uh, uh, this is what we know. This is what we don't know. And to a certain extent, when you're writing the script, the things that you don't know, you try to minimize on the script level. You know, you're not, we're not gonna have a battle scene because we don't really know what kind of weapons were used or what kind of like battles were actually fought in some cases. Um, so we try not to misrepresent that, but then we did focus on the things that we know. Um, and you know, if, if there's anything we didn't know in, in the course of history that you know, we, we tried to be as respectful as possible, um, take a little creative liberty, um, and uh, you know, use costumes or things like that that we believed would would have been historically accurate. But you know, you you, you take a little creative liberty, but you with, always with respect. Um, and that's something that I think gets lost a lot in the filmmaking process because of the chaos that goes on. Um, How powerful is it as a filmmaker to make a film about a subject that kind of educates most of our audience that we don't realize what has gone on, what what's happened and what's and these people are around us right now how powerful is that to kind of showcase a story for your audience and, and celebrate you know these people that still exist today yeah well that's that's the biggest challenge and um you know at at, at your core as a director you're trying to tell just a story that moves people but then you also have this duty as well to make sure that your audience understands what's going on <laughs> um and yeah i mean that the easy way to do that is through exposition um, you know, you make a movie and you have a big title card at the beginning of the movie, Star Wars style, that describes what's going on. Um, or you can be a lot more creative, and I think the, the real skill in, in, in directing a movie is being able to bring someone into a world without too much exposition to where, you know, you're not, you're not patronizing your audience, you're not saying, um, yeah, you don't know this and we're going to tell you all about it, because audiences are, are immediately bored by history lessons. Um, so for us, it was more a process of let's create um, some, some curiosity. You know, we'll introduce this world, um, you know, little bits and pieces, uh, bits and pieces at a time, uh, and allow the audience to sort of learn piece by piece what's going on, what time period we're in, um, what the story is, what the actual kind of geography of this world is, what the, um, you know, uh, uh, time frame that the story's taking place in, and, and we have a very complicated story that's not linear. Um, it goes in a lot into the psychology of our main character. So it's a very delicate process. We spent a lot of time recutting, previewing the movie again and again and again to new audiences, seeing how they, how they, how they felt, what they understood. If we had any gaps in, in, in people's understandings, we tried to, to, to resolve those, whether through editing or sound design. You know, there are little subtle things that we were able to do to make sure that the audience um, understood everyone's, everything that was going on because for a story that not a lot of people know about, you have to kind of educate first and then entertain. 
Um, Absolutely. And it's a challenge to, to do those both at once. I, lo I love, I, I just want to work with you because you're so, you, you're just so attentive and thorough and it's so important. And it's, you know, when you're being, you've got to be true to the work, true to the period, true to the people. Um, I think it, it's, it's fantastic that you take all of these things and also research. People forget that in filmmaking, that it's good to put out to audiences, get the reaction, see how they feel. Um, speaking of audiences, last night we were uh, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, um, putting it in focus on Latin cinema and had everything from uh, the 1800s of Los Angeles down to you know countries as far away as Peru. In partnership with New Filmmakers LA and the Academy of Motion Pitch Arts and Sciences, how great was it to have your film screen at such an event? Oh man, it's, I, I said it last night, probably too many times, but it was an incredible honor. Um, especially, I think for me, I, I, I have no perspective on the movie and whether it's any good anymore. So I kind of gauge, I kind of gauge um, whether we did a good job by the, the films that we screen alongside. Oh, you did, in, you did. In festivals, and so I was, I was very honored to see a lot of incredibly uh, uh, interesting and captivating and unique films that we were screening alongside, and I think it was programmed really, really well. Um, so that was a, gr a great honor to, to show alongside those films. And, and also, um, you know, Ironically enough, my kind of background in filmmaking is is in Latin America. Um, the first the first movie I ever made was was in Nicaragua. I have a lot of history in, in Nicaragua, and and, um, and so that was always my passion was was to make movies actually in Nicaragua and with you know narrative movies with using my friends as as movie stars and things like that um, <laughs> rather than uh, in front of a documentary camera telling how how terrible their life is or which isn't nearly as exciting. Um, you know, so for me, it was it was always a passion of of okay, I have all these friends and and you know that I love dearly in this place that I love dearly. Uh, let's make them movie stars rather than you know putting them in front of a documentary camera. I love that. That's great. So for me, when when we made this film uh, that takes place in Los Angeles, we chose the time period that we knew we wanted it to take place. We did it in Spanish, which I was you know, um, which which really had to do more to do with that's the time period it was taking place. We it was at a Spanish mission when we showed it. Um, you know, we, we were displaying that time period. Uh, but I was never particularly thinking like, oh, this is a, a, a Latino movie. This is like a Hispanic, um, this is, you know, Hispanic, Latino or Hispanic cinema. I was, we were thinking this is a kind of the origin story of the city of, of Los Angeles. But then at the same time, having been programmed um, in, uh, in a lot of these screening blocks that focus on, on Latino and Hispa Hispanic cinema, uh, I kind of realized like, oh wow, we, we actually really, um, you know, our story is, is, is in a lot of ways the, the origin story of Latin America um, because it's, it was, it's about the contact and the conflict between, between Spain uh, when, when they colonized and the indigenous people that were, that were yeah. already here. Um, and so, yeah, it's, 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 I think it's incredibly interesting and it's, um, it, was, it was really cool for me to, to, to be able to participate in this because we had a, not just our film that was um, you know, taking place 200 years ago, but we had films in the present day and, and films in like a, you know, alternative future mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, from, from all over the world as well. And so, I don't know, it's, it's I don't know how to how to describe it other than it was really interesting to, to kind of for us to 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 kind of be a story of the origin of, of Latin America in a lot of ways and, um, and open up people's eyes to that yeah, period yeah. and what happened. What what's next for you, Douglas? Um, with regards to Nemcomoc, um, you know, we're currently trying to, to to develop it into a feature film and or a um, a limited series uh, commenting on um, you know the the. The, the history of indigenous California, um, and there's been some some definite definite interest in that. Um, the great thing about something like that would be, you know, we 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 were able to tell this story and expand on this story, but have it be kind of like the first part of you know an anthology kind of a thing where we can tell you know the story of of Isadora and 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 then um, you know the the Toyperino revolt that happened actually. Earlier in time than, than our story in the, in 1785, but we can tell that story, and then we can tell you know the story of 
of Estanislao, who was, a, who was a, an indigenous man in, in Northern California who led a bunch of revolts against, um, um, you know, the, the, the colonizers. Yeah. And, uh, and then the story of, you know, first contact when, when indigenous people really first started losing a lot of their, their, their culture and heritage. Well, it's important to share. I mean, on, it, it's a really important time that everybody expresses their voice, but it's very important to, you know, show the origins of, of, of the beginnings of this country and, and, and what people went through. And I, you know, I always commend people that can, you know, educate us about the, the place that we live, you know, um, and that's really very important. Um, Douglas, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you and your, your great film journey. We, we look forward to much more of your work with us. So thank you. Thank you so much.